if you listen very closely, you might notice the screaming guitar in the background. The heavy metal drums going absolutely crazy. The singer just at the top of his game. I think that can only mean that we are looking inside of the main base of the Red Protoss player who has the most badass nickname that I've ever seen before. We're looking at Necromortis's main nexus. Fairly certain if you go on Instagram right now, there are at least a dozen heavy metal bands with that exact same name. They're probably all from Finland. There's a good chance Saro is playing in at least one of them. Anyways, the opponent in this particular viewer-submitted game, playing here with the blue Terra CVs. He's aided by a, uh, a Super Saiyan there, and I think he's gonna need it, because how in the world are you ever gonna face off against Necromortis of all people with the blue Terran pieces? We're looking at... Puma Uno! P Puma Uno! Puma Uno's main command center. Not nearly as bad as of a nickname, but maybe he can make up for the nickname with some stellar gameplay. Now, if you have an awesome game of StarCraft 2 that you've recently played yourself, you can send it over to replays at loco.tv, and maybe I'll be casting your game in the future. For some reason, attaching a .se2 replay file to an email turns out to be very difficult for many people. Uh, some players have even sent me over their entire replays folder. It's like, hey, Loco, here's all the games that I've played over the last five years. Enjoy! <laughs> Not entirely what I'm looking for, guys. If you have an exceptional game that you've recently played, maybe I should point it out like that, right? If you have an amazing game, an exceptional game of StarCraft 2, you think it will be fun for the channel, you can send it on over, and maybe I'll be making fun of your game in the near future. Anyhow... Puma Uno, what exactly is the plan? We've got 400 minerals, we go for the command on the low ground after a factory, double gas in the main base, mining three SCVs in total, okay. Um, are we gonna go, what are we gonna make out of the, the barracks here? Are we doing a Terran versus Terran opener? Is that what we're doing? Okay, yeah, we're gonna go for double Reaper here together with some Hellions, fair enough. Stalker is waiting inside of the main base of the Protoss player. I mean, that probe that was sent out earlier was killed by uh, a Reaper, so he's waiting. Even though uh, the little handrail apparently... Uh, anyways, the, this, <laughs> this Stalker doesn't want to run any risks of accidentally falling down. So rather than protecting the high ground, he's protecting the high ground from a distance. And you know what? Safety is of the utmost importance. We'll see. Necromortis with a nickname like that, you would imagine that death isn't really that terrifying to him, but... He wants to make sure that stalkers do not fall out of the main base here, and, you know, that is something uh, that is worth considering. Now, here's that little hit squad. This is normally something that Protoss players will actually notice, but there's no adept, there's really not a whole lot of anything out on the map. So, at this point, Necromortis is gonna not, well, figure this out until, I guess, the units are inside of the natural. He decides to go for charge first, by the way, so that is charge before warp gates is even done. Very, very quick. Uh, probe is moving out right now, but Necromortis, yeah, he doesn't realize like, at all what's going on. So this is actually, with some decent micro, gonna be able to deal a ton of damage. That second Stalker comes from the main base. There's no third Stalker. There's already three gateways done, however. So as soon as the warp gate finishes, which is right now, I guess he's gonna be able to warp in reinforcements to deal with all of this, but this is already more than enough damage. Now, obviously, the Terran player has gone for a delayed command center, but in the end, Nine probes have already gone down at this point in the game. Probe over here at least scouted out exactly what's happening. It's also gonna get sacrificed here for the greater good. Okay. So, I like to start here for our Terran player quite a bit. Now, of course, when it comes to uh, viewer-submitted games, these are generally speaking always games with a bit of a twist. There are usually not a whole lot of games that are just standard macro games. I mean, we do also get those sent over. Um, in case you're unfamiliar, Motlesis goes over all of the viewer-submitted replays, and he selects the very best ones for me to go ahead and cast. And, you know, over the years, we've gotten so many replays that usually the, the yeah, the, the ones that are a little unorthodox are the ones that people are actually interested in watching, right? So, generally speaking, those are the types of games that I, uh, I do like to see quite a bit. So, I can imagine that at some point, we're gonna see something weird in this particular game. So far, though, nothing all too weird, other than maybe this very randomly timed Stargate. Don't tell me we're gonna make a Void Ray, okay? If we're gonna make a Void Ray, I'm gonna cry. Not literally. By the way, there is Serral <laughs> subconsciously. Maybe that's why Serral is in the heavy metal bin. Uh, Serral's spitting around on the main Nexus. Maybe subconsciously that was registered right there for me. Okay, we just made a Stargate. Yeah, that's beautiful. It is a very elegant, very pretty structure. 
I mean, historically speaking, the ancient Egyptians, for example, they were very big on building stuff. Right? Be it temples, be it tombs, be, be it whatever. So maybe that's the reason why Necromortis has built a Stargate. Ooh, okay. Well, that is another reason. We're gonna go for a fleet beacon right now as well. Fair enough. Um, Terran has decided to now roll that cyclone towards the other side of the map. He gets a little bit of vision of the third nexus. So that is all he really needs to apparently now return back home. Terran's been happily, though, macroing up. We've got the 1-1 one -one upgrades here. They're mostly in line with the, uh, the Stimpak research, so at the very least, the plus one infantry weapons. That one's gonna finish up eh, right around the same time. So if you go for an attack right now, Terran should be able to hit a nice little power spike right as he gets across the map. So, yep, you know what? I don't, yeah, I don't mind what Puma Uno here is doing whatsoever. I mean, you do have to, no, no, keep, keep, come on. Jimmy! There you go. Apparently, they had a little bit of a pee break right there before they decided to uh, leave. That is <laughs> something that needs to be considered. Not all Terran commanders keep that in mind, but Puma Uno, yeah, the ruler of the Terran Dominion, of course, he knows exactly what is going on. Plus one's gonna finish up. Stimpak already finished up. We can go for an attack. If you can get those siege tanks in a good... Oh my god. If you can keep those siege tanks in a good position, they can most definitely deal a ton of damage. Now, I was freaking out there a little bit. Ooh, charge is done, by the way. That is gonna be quite nice when it comes to dealing with this army here from the Terran player. Auto turret goes down. Deals quite a bit of uh, supplemental damage, too. Uh, freaking out a little bit here because of the fact that there's a mothership coming up. I was wondering what Necromortis was gonna do with that fleet beacon. Um, the mothership takes, give or take, about seven and a half years to produce. So, you know, we're gonna have to wait for another little bit, but eventually... We have an entire city popping out of that nexus. How does it work? Nobody knows. Here's the additional zealots, though, charging at this. Um, he's got six gateways here in total, which is not really that much if you're gonna go mass zealot. Although I'm not entirely sure what the ratio of zealots to mothership is. Don't know exactly how many gateways you need, but if I were to make a guess, at least eight. Probably more. Maybe, maybe you can go up to 12 even when you have this many minerals coming in. Notice here that he is not actually mining the gases here in the natural entirely, so... This is, uh, our Protoss player focused... Well, just on making Zealots. I think if you're gonna make Zealots, you should really add on more gateways. Either that or you should mass expand all over the map. But I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, Necromortis here is gonna start... There you go. He's gonna start stacking up some, uh, additional minerals here if he doesn't add on any more production. Anyways, the Mama ship. She'll be coming out soon. Any moment now. It takes so long, man. There it is. The mothership is out. Now, I just finished um, playing the real skill, A Legacy of the Void campaign. Um, let's just say that the mothership in this particular game, it is a little bit smaller. If you would like to see a highlight video, by the way, or something along those lines, let me know down below in the comment section. We can definitely try and put something together, because I think that playthrough was a lot of fun. But let's just say that the mothership's, um, yeah, in a real scale, so it's a mod that basically puts the entire, well, Protoss army in a real scale. Let's just say that the mothership is a little bit bigger than what you have right here. Anyways, we're gonna be forced to warp in Zealots inside of the main base right now to deal with a triple Metavec drop. Okay. The Zealots here, running away as well, from the third nexus to the main nexus, and at the very least they're gonna be able to keep some of this alive. Puma, by the way, has not seen the Mama ship yet, and the Mama ship is on a mission. <sighs> Ooh, okay. Um, the only reason why it would be moving the mothership this aggressively is to go for an offensive recall. This is not an ability we see very often, but you see that little, that little thing that just got enough energy for just now, in the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> oh god, why are you hanging it so close? Anyways, uh, you can offensively recall units towards the mothership. No, I see quite a few units that you can offensively warp towards the mothership if you want to. I think that's the plan. Is that what we've been setting up for over the last 10 minutes, Necro? Is that the plan? I think that's exactly the plan. Okay, the mothership right now moves forward inside of the Terran player's main base. Recall gets used on pretty much every single unit out there. It's around the same time as the Medivac drop once again unloads at the third base, but suddenly there is a Protoss infestation, I guess is what we can call it, 
in the main base of the Terran player. Puma Uno, okay, freaking out. All army hotkeying everything back towards the main base. I actually think that that drop could have been quite nice. There's still quite a bit of economy, I guess, for the Protoss player as well on the right side. Ooh, those Widow Mines dealing a whole lot of friendly fire as well. The Mama Ship doesn't have the ability to warp in reinforcements. She can't really do much else other than, I guess, cloak and, well, shoot some lasers here and there. But the lasers are honestly not particularly inspiring. Um, I think we should bring the Mother Ship back in, no? There's very little anti-air. There's only six Marines. I guess there's a couple of Widow Mines as well, but there's really not that much that you need to be scared of. That surprises me. I don't think we really needed to back off. Um... <laughs> so, one ability that the Mothership obviously has as well is that it cloaks everything underneath. I think if Necromortis decided to... Oh, you know what? He's resurrecting. Of course he is. He's resurrecting the Zealots that have just died. Everything <laughs> makes a lot more sense now. We're coming full circle. You think these are new Zealots? Uh, wrong. This guy's a necromancer. Um, what exactly are we, uh, are we gonna just do the same trick twice? Is that the plan? I think we're probably gonna just do the exact same trick a second time. Yeah. We just have to wait until every single one of those zealots is reincarnated and then it will be, uh, good to go. Mother ship, once again, going back in. Offensive recall, once again, coming right up. And suddenly, there's a Protoss army in the main base. Now those Widow Mines, okay, they've already fired. The mothership will get sacrificed here in the end, but I've got a feeling that this is already enough. There's really no way that Terran's gonna be able to deal with this. It's like a Nidus Worm, but worse. And more expensive. So actually, this, yeah, it's definitely worse. I mean, it's worse for the Terran player in this game, but it's also just bad. <laughs> it's working out in this match, though. Look at these Zealots, man, eager to charge at whatever they can. Finally, they do find an objective, right? In the form of an SCV or maybe a mule here and there. Um, I think Terran's super dead. Yeah, these Widow Mine hits are gonna be sweet, but um, the Zealots are behaving like Zerklings. There it is, GG. <laughs> Next up, we find ourselves on Babylon. Spotting right here in the bottom right -hand corner of the map, playing with the Red Protoss probes, we have King Arthas. And I think that's beautiful. Arthas, my son. The day you were born. The very forests of Lord Aran whispered the name. Gl Glory for Ire? Hold up right now. Glory for Ire is a Zerk player? That makes very little sense. Anyways, we had a very quick early game probe scout. Apparently that is here to uh, block the Zerk's natural from coming up. Although, what's throwing me off a little bit is this pylon over here on the high ground. On the loading screen of this particular game, neither of these two players were ranked. So neither of these two players actually had a ranking, which, oh god, um, always is a little bit concerning. I was wondering where we were going. What exactly... <laughs> uh, that gateway, man. That gateway positioning is... I know I've played a lot of StarCraft over the years, okay? This may not be painful to many of you, but that gateway positioning kind of hurts my soul a little bit. It's right smack dead in the center of the ramp. Anyways, Forge on the back of that gateway as well. Pylon is gonna finish up here on the low ground. Um, none of this really makes sense, because that early game probe scout usually is sent out to block the Zerg's natural. And then if you block the Zerg's natural, you wouldn't go for a cannon rush. But maybe, just maybe, Arthas was a smart guy, right? He was just misunderstood. Um, I mean, uh, Frostmourne, we, we had the, uh, the entire city that needed to be purged and all that. Um, just a misunderstanding, I'm sure. <laughs> the thing is... This guy, man. Yeah, there you go. He's got the level of thinking that many players lack. Okay, you know, he didn't expect the creep spread there, fair enough. But because he knew that his opponent knew that that probe was supposed to scout the natural and then block it, he also knew that the opponent knew that in that case, the chances for a cannon rush would be very low. And then he decided to go for a cannon rush, uh, cannon rush regardless, just because the opponent would never expect it. That's beautiful. Like, we're all out here playing StarCraft 2, right? We're all out here playing checkers. And this guy playing 3D chess. I think that's beautiful. Okay? Why would you add on a third Photon Cannon if two do the job? Now, I know many of you are wondering this. Three is a bigger number than two. <laughs> do you really need any more information? In the meantime, glory for Ire. He decides to go for a Roach Warren. I don't hate the Roach Warren, but I think, yeah, I was gonna say, we need a second Gas Geyser. 
Without a second gas, you're not gonna be able to make a whole lot of roaches. Without larva, you can also not make any roaches though, so that problem is solved all on its own. Now the natural expansion of the Zerg player is gone and, well, Arthas, um, yeah, he can continue perching this base. Something with the grain. I don't remember the exact storyline anymore. Ooh, my god. We're making a, uh, a crescent moon worth of gateways over here. What exactly is the plan here, Arthas? What are we gonna do from here? Roaches, by the way, if I were to make a guess, they're gonna throw themselves at these photon cannons. I think that's beautiful. That spine crawler is doing nothing. It's mostly just uh, a protector of the main base. The sword in the darkness. Oh god, Arthas, Arthas, stop. Arthas, stop. I know you're not ranked, but like, please, please, please stop. You've already done the damage. You've killed 300 minerals worth of hatchery. Now, it cost you a whole lot more than all of that. Obviously, you can always go for a, uh, a, a contain, right? Eh, don't hate it. I'm just a little concerned for what the follow-up here for Glory for Ire is going to be. This guy, he may have a name that sounds like he is going to betray the swarm, but I'm not entirely sure that that is the case. He clearly seems to be trying. I quite like the lair here, especially if he decides to go for a Nidus Worm. I think a Nidus Network here would be an amazing choice. Losing the Ravagers, not as amazing of a choice, but, you know, uh, respectable. Sometimes sacrifices need to be made. This is something that, uh, yeah, maybe this is some sort of religious thing going on inside of the base of, of Ire, okay? You never know. Why are we... No. no. That's not what we... No, we really... Uh... Okay, so the lair is done. Are we gonna make use of the lair? The answer is no. What we are gonna do is add on a couple of spine crawlers together with a spore crawler. Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's really scared of uh, an oracle. Maybe he's really scared of a void raid. Maybe he's really scared of Dark Templar. When you think about it, guys like Arthas, right? Players like Arthas. I mean, he's going for a Twilight Council. But the warp gates are coming up right now as well. Okay, I was going to say, there's something wrong here. Um, the Twilight Council is uncommon. Most of the time, cannon rushes in the early game. They follow it up with one of two options. Either void race or Dark Templar. And you know what? The Spore Crawler is pretty good against both. Glory for Ire. Smart. Dropper Lord. Ooh. That's a slow Dropper Lord as well, though. Um. <laughs> please don't load roaches into that. Please do not load roaches into that. P please. Okay, well, he doesn't have roaches anymore. He's making new ones right now. I always feel like that's a misclick. If Glory for Ire assumes that this is an Overseer, um, this is gonna get really tricky. You can't really move it down the ramp and kill spy or kill, kill the, the fountain cannons anyway. It's he needs to wait until the creep tumor's out, I guess. Is it stuck? Huh. You know what? Maybe it was bait. That spine crawler just pretending to be a juicy little snack right here for these zealots. Not quite the case. Okay. Overlord speed is coming up right now. We could have gone for a Nidus worm. We even have an overlord over here, you know, and boom. Everything dies. Bada bing, bada boom. Not what we're doing. <laughs> We're expanding! Oh, okay. You know what? Glory for Ire. He's running out of juice. He needs new minerals. This is the slowest expansion that I've ever seen, but eventually a new base will be coming up. Now, here's the... Uh, there you go. There's the Nematized Carapace upgrade. We're gonna get some additional speed. Um... Okay, so the reason why the Twilight Council didn't surprise me all too much is because of the timing. He didn't rush out the Dark Shrine or anything, but we're still going Dark Shrine. Okay, not quite what I expected, especially since he went charge, but we're still gonna go... This is the strangest contain ever, especially since Protoss has also effectively contained himself on one base by just not making any use of the contain. Anyways, uh, here's the hatchery being acquired. Glory for Ire is gonna split up his economy. This is something that's actually quite difficult. When your hatcheries are all hotkeyed together, usually the macro is pretty manageable. But when they're all split up like this... <laughs> um, it's actually quite difficult to properly manage. 
Arthas is happily sitting here at the bottom of the ramp. He's just sitting. I don't think they're really going to be able to break the main base. Maybe one of the Dark Templar is going to try, but it's going to get poked to death. Death in two, one. There you go. I was a little early with my, or a little late rather with my counting. There are still drones, right? Inside of this OV as well. So it would be kind of funny if he takes the entire map without Protoss ever realizing. An alternative option, by the way, from the Nidus Worm that I would have really liked to see it was a, uh, a Muta transition. One base Muta is pretty terrible, but I mean, it's better than whatever's going on here. <laughs> no, 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 Loco. This is brilliant. You don't understand. Sometimes it's important to remind myself. People have told me in the past that I've been quite mean to some of the players that I commentate the games on. So, um, I, um, I've taken a complete 180. I'm gonna make the assumption that every single move is brilliant. Now, when's the last time you've seen a Ravager drop, huh? Never. Um, not because it's not good, but because two Ravagers inside of an Overlord do very little. Um, <laughs> my god, man. This guy started up commercial Overlord flights. You love to see it. You can buy a little ticket in the main base. You might be transported away from this Protoss contain. Anyhow, um... It takes three biles to kill basically everything. I mean, not basically everything, but like siege tanks, prisms, uh, all the important stuff takes three biles. So two ravagers inside of a plane, not that exciting, but they do get to... Look at that, man. The, when you look at it, the, the over, overlord right here, right? It's got three little chambers. It's got like three little separate balloons. These guys, they're in a luxury experience right now that none of us understand. Okay, Ravager drop harass. Charge is done. We have the Dark Templar also ready to go. It's gonna warp in a sentry over here, sure. Ooh, are we gonna go after the pylon? Hell yeah, dude. No, 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 you gotta retarget that, though. This is the one pylon to rule it all. We're not gonna warp in a Dark Templar. God only knows whether or not an Overlord is a detector. I mean, it was in StarCraft 1, then it wasn't in StarCraft 2. Okay, well, that at the very least is now triggering the Protoss player to go towards that high ground. He's apparently so concerned about the uh, two Ravagers in the main base that this is the point where we decide to pull the trigger. Queen's coming away. Can we see some transfuses? No, 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 no. They're saving it for themselves. All right? Everybody is a little selfish in the end, and the queens are no different. They could have transfused their brothers, but instead they decide to, yes, transfuse themselves! Beautiful. Eleven additional roaches are about to spawn, and that's what the queens are saving time for. Look at them. Look at them. Hell yeah. Get him, Brenda. Get him, Karen. Get him, Margaret. How are the Ravagers doing, by the way? Um, we could have warped in a Dark Templar, but we never did. Now all the gateways are actually unpowered. Uh, this Ravager is really keen on attacking that warp gate. The other one was keen on attacking whatever else. Protoss actually now currently not with that great of an economy. Um, and it looks like the reinforcing units inside of the main base have cleaned all of this up. In the meantime, up north. We've got a couple additional queens. We've got a couple additional hatcheries as well. And drones are actually coming up. So the reason why this can be difficult to macro is because normally you just... Put all of your hatcheries in one control group and you produce out of all of them simultaneously. Um, not the case in this game, right? I mean, he could obviously make a separate control group for these three and bind them all together, but the main base definitely has to be separated. That is not creep. <laughs> these tumors... Re oh, are we gonna drop some creep over here? I saw some movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory for Iyer wants to spread the creep on over towards that base that he made and... Well, these tumors have been in a charge of that. What's the plan, Arthas? We gotta purge the city. Not simply contain it, okay? I can't watch you do this, Arthas. That was my Jaina impression. I think it was pretty good. I would do Uther as well, but I don't actually know any of his lines. Ah, of course, I found it. Glad you could make it, Uther. Watch your tone with me, boy. You may be the prince, but I'm still your superior as a paladin. <laughs> this entire city must be purged. How can you even consider that? <laughs> Here go the zealots. Ooh, the zealots are moving. 
Okay. No, no, no. Zealots. Okay, yeah. No, I understand, you know? You don't want to get your feet dirty. You're already walking on the creep. I don't believe that zealots wear shoes. They're kind of like cats, you know? They don't really enjoy walking in dirty stuff either because then you have to... You have to clean yourself the entire time. Can't even really take a shower. I don't think... I don't think Protoss... Uh, Protoss and Protoss players. I don't think they shower. That's my theory. Maybe Protoss players in the comment section can... Uh, Persuade me, uh, persuade me one way or another, but I, I'm, I'm not convinced. Um, either way, though, what exactly is the plan right now? We're gonna go for another Nexus. They've accidentally become next door neighbors. The roaches are just yoloing down. My God, roaches! No, 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 no. You shall not pass. Uh. <laughs> Observer is gonna scout out what's happening inside of the main base. Double Spire is what's happening inside of the main base. Glory for Ire has a surprising amount of gas. Not because he's been mining a lot of gas, but because he hasn't been spending any of it. Zealot Warping in the main base. Um, We're gonna have to use the units. There you go. Ooh, a Protal Sandwich. Or should I say Zork Sandwich, actually. I think the, the Zork is the meat in the sandwich. The Protals is the bun. Yeah, yeah, Protoss is the bread for sure. Okay. Well, the main base is purged, but I wonder if that's gonna be enough. Oh, wait. I oh! Oh, hold up right now. It's Arthas who decides to hit GG. Arthas, there's no way you just gave us an offensive GG, did you? Please. I'm, I'm, now, I'm now cheering for glory for ire. Please, glory for ire. You need to start up a lair. Okay, well, you're starting up a new Roach Warren. At this point, Arthas, by the way, I think he's still making the assumption. Yeah, this is what's happening, obviously. He's still making the assumption that that was it. That there is nothing else out on the map. He saw a little bit of creep, but that's really about it. Okay. Now, even though they don't have boots, these zealots are made for walking. They're gonna start moving around the map. Rally points are set up everywhere. So he's gonna find out about this base over here in just a moment. Now the mm, prism also sees it. The queens see the prism, but apparently they had some sort of weird thing going on. The roaches, though, in the meantime, yeah, they're dealing a bunch of damage on the other side of the map. Keep in mind that in a game of StarCraft 2, the win condition is to kill all of your opponent's structures. The zealots are gonna go to town here pretty rapidly, but those roaches are also dealing a good amount of damage. Dark Templar, very nice, but there's detection up in the air, plus the Dark Templar have forgotten how to walk and to attack. Alright, alright. Eventually, they will kill a few of the roaches, but not quite enough. Arthas should have enough damage output to kill everything. Roachworn just finished up, however. I would love to see him selecting his larvae, because there are tons of larvae here. And just turn all of those into roaches. New spine crawlers are coming up right here on the right side of the map. The drone's also now evacuating this position. The four spines are gonna be very, very nice. There's one more, <laughs> once more. Mostly one pylon here to power the top section of this base. Mm -hmm. Prism, by the way, just fell, it seems. The queen's not slacking on the job. Spine crawlers are not finishing up just yet, though. And this little attack here from uh, from Arthas is quite nice. He's killed one base. Now he's gonna send every... Well, he's killed one base. He's killed, like, three bases. Uh, he's killed the base over here, though. And I think he wanted to send everything on over towards this uh, base in the top right-hand corner of the map. But with some good transfuses. Transfuse? Come on. Brenda, don't be selfish. We saw you being selfish earlier, man. D d don't be selfish. There you go. There you go. Brenda and Karen transfusing uh, the... Ni oh, not the Nidus. The, the spine crawlers. Okay, now they're retargeting on the hatchery. And Arthas decides to leave the game without a GG. I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth if I have to. To the ends of the earth!